Welcome back. So we've been talking about machine learning and the various uh, categorizations of algorithms based on whether or not you have supervised or unsupervised labeled data or unlabeled data. And so I wanted to walk through kind of a flow chart to, to explain uh, kind of the decision space and what some of the algorithms are. Okay, so let's say you have some system that's generating data. This is the system you're trying to model or understand. Uh, it's generating training data that you're going to use to build a machine learning model. Now, the first decision we have to make uh, or, or assess is whether or not this data is labeled or has these kind of truth labels. Did some expert uh, label the data with the outcomes that you want to build the model on? So in that example of, of pictures of cats and dogs, do those images have labels of which ones are actually cats and which ones are dogs? If the answer is yes, then this is a family of algorithms called supervised learning algorithms, a huge branch of machine learning. If not, then you're going to use an unsupervised learning algorithm. And then you have to ask, is your data discrete or continuous, or are the outcomes or the things, are the labels discrete or continuous? So in the case of discrete, uh, dogs and cats are two distinct categories. That's discrete labels. Whereas continuous labels would be something like, um, you know, a scalar measurement of the force on a wing or something like that. Um, so a continuous variable, maybe it's, um, you know, earning, earning potential uh, given some, some input factors. So something that is a continuous variable versus something discrete. And if you have a supervised learning algorithm based on discrete uh, labels, then this is called classification. And there's lots of algorithms, including uh, support vector machines, neural networks, decision trees, random forests, things like that. Uh, if you have this continuous data, then you're going to build a regression model. And these are the, the kind of models we're very familiar with in linear regression, Gaussian processes, uh, logistic regression, things like that. Similarly, in the unsupervised branch, depending on if my data is discrete or continuous, I might be doing uh, clustering. So some of my top algorithms are k-means, k-nearest neighbors, spectral clustering, things like that. Uh, if I have discrete, if I think that my data comes from these discrete categories, uh, and if I think that my data has continuous uh, variations in the outcome, then I'll use something, and I, I know I'm calling this different names every time. I might call it dimensionality reduction, feature extraction, pattern extraction. Here I'm calling it embedding. So I'm going to learn how to fit this data into some continuous uh, manifold, some, some smooth manifold that defines how my data varies with, uh, with the input, input data. And so things like principal components analysis, uh, autoencoders, diffusion maps are all embedding examples that learn kind of a feature space or patterns that describe that data. Now there's another branch I think is important uh, where you might have partial labeled information. And that's, that's a lot more subtle. We call these semi-supervised. You can see that it's kind of purple because it's somewhere between supervised and unsupervised. Maybe I only have partial labels uh, on some of the data or some of the time. And here I've added a new decision box called model or modify. If all I want to do is uh, kind of model the system and understand and, and build something that could kind of predict or model that in the future, then there's a whole bunch of algorithms in the generative uh, models family. So GANs, generative adversarial networks, are a really uh, popular neural network architecture that is allowing you to start generating new data that looks like it came from this system. Very cool. And so this is actually called self-supervised because in some sense this has two uh, machine learning algorithms that kind of uh, are constantly fighting with each other in this adversarial fashion. To, one is kind of supervising the other. Um, and it started off probably with some partial labels from the true system though. Now, if I want to actually modify my system through um, feedback control, or if I have a robot that's actually in the world doing stuff and it changes the world, this would be a branch uh, called reinforcement learning. So this is where uh, you've probably heard of algorithms that have beaten the human experts at Go and chess, and they can play arcade games and, and build you know, now robots that go and interact with the world. That's all reinforcement learning. There's some amount of labeled truth data. Maybe the algorithm knows if it won the game or lost the game, but that information is partial. It doesn't know if this 
intermediate move was a good move or a bad move. So that's another example of semi-supervised learning. Uh, and there's fundamentally this feedback in a lot of these systems. There's feedback signal to modify your system or some control parameters. And so this is not exactly just a feed forward uh, flow chart in the case of reinforcement learning. And similarly, in supervised learning, I can make the same decision. I might want to modify my system. And so I might want to, for example, optimize certain parameters of my system or develop a control law. And I might do that in a purely supervised fashion as opposed to a semi-supervised fashion. Okay? And again, I should really point out this is not um, exhaustive. This is not complete. It's not even 100% you know, accurate. This is just a, a good, rough, principle sketch uh, of how you can think about different machine learning algorithms based on kind of the aspects of what information you have and whether or not there's feedbacks back to your environment. Uh, here's another way of looking at this. Um, I should point out that this, um, this figure is in a, a collaborative paper, Machine Learning for Fluid Mechanics, uh, by myself, Bernd Nowak, and Petros Kumatsakis uh, on the archive here. But this is just another way of looking at that, that same flow chart. You have kind of supervised on one side, unsupervised on the other, and semi-supervised in the middle. And you can kind of categorize the various tasks you might want to do in machine learning and the different methods you have at your disposal uh, in, these, in these categories. Okay, so that's just an overview uh, of kind of this labeled, unlabeled, discrete, continuous uh, breakdown that a lot of us use to categorize different machine learning methods. And that's how you kind of choose which method uh, fits, fits your type of data and problem. Okay, thank you.